adjustment of the track. That was so cool, I didn't even try it yet. And when I did it, I was like, I'm blowing myself away. So we are suffering what in the industry is called a drift hangover. Yeah, we're pretty tired. We've been uh, adrift of it now for over 800 days, it feels like. Straight. Adam's face tells the story. But you know what? We're going to cheer ourselves up because our boys at FDF Race Shop have rented a track out for a private drift couple of hours with all the boys from the LZ World Tour. And they gave us a tree. Three fit is and If you love the sound of you're gonna love this video. That was a really good impression. Well, if you're listening to it as much as I have, you every time I come to America or Canada, BQ. To be fair, what it means is loads of laps, can't catch anyone. Let's go. So the first corner is an entry of about 100 miles an hour. And Dave said he's going out for a quick lap. I'm suspicious and think he's going to absolutely send it for that because that's what he always does. on the first lap. Yeah. And the disparity between the cars here, Dave's like 150 horsepower. I mean, they're like 1500 horsepower. Like, God only knows. 200 on my horse! Safe to say that he's uh, brought a spoon to a gunfight. Here's Dave being chased in by literally the highest horsepower car on the entire world. Have to commit, Dave. He's not leading, he's running away. Oh, he's, 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 getting, he's going to overtake it. Where can he catch him? Literally, the saying is cat and mouse. Like, that is cat and mouse. Dog. Not too, too sure how it happened, but he got overtaken. Yeah, like Tommy Lemaire just somehow happened to get around Dave and his lead. Dave is somewhere in Dexter. Oh no, no, sorry, Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave's way back there. <laughs> Feel it's a bit sketchy here, but it's actually really fun to watch. I, I, I mean, like, it's the first time I've enjoyed drifting in a long time because it's like sketch. Okay, so Josiah does the craziest entries here. Oh, this is going to be sketchy or what? Can't help but uh, notice, Dave, you uh, 
slide did jump on that last lap. I don't know which one, but... What you do? I think it just, uh, the tire is gone. Have you ever seen anything like that before? What? I've never what seen it? it. I don't know what's happened there. How did you... Only what? the car's not squatting that much. You put on these tires and said they would literally run until the end of time, and you've done like four laps. It's very sensitive. Your cheat tire. Sending it pretty hard now, to be fair. She was on the limit. The one before that was good, though, right? Absolutely center in, lad. Center in, lad. I've never seen anything like that before, have you? I don't have a reputation for brakes, but I think you're building your own reputation here, Dave. I'm gonna be Davy D Lamb, am I? Davy D Lamb. <laughs> there we go. Davy D Lamb, a tea breaker in the house. So before Dave breaks the car, I want to go in for a few laps, but I think going as a passenger spin with somebody, I think that's the best thing to do. My chariot has arrived. Woken me up, dude. That turn, that first turn, fast, man. Like, you're watching, all, watching drifting all weekend. It's nice to get out there. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is fun. Just like super loose, jump on track whenever. Damn, man. I love this. Lucas, you're doing a bit of grab. Dude, I live in Japan, boy. We gotta prepare our skylight for the streets. You know what I'm saying? One day I'll show you, dog. He's actually from Lithuania, even though it doesn't sound like he's from Lithuania. I'm Japanese, can eat you one mother He's literally only doing this because I'm recording. I'm not. <laughs> You're recording because I'm doing this. Everybody on YouTube, vote in the comments below. Who deserves to drive this car next? Me or Josh? is gonna be out before they can come in. It doesn't matter. We'll have that in record for the next time. Nobody wants to see me drive up. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna say. 
So we have a fresh-ish set of tyres on. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm doing an out lap first as in a driving lap. We have about six laps left in the car. Right, so what we're going to do is a little competition between Josh, Lucas and Adam. Two laps each, I'm going to judge it who is the best overall. Let's go watch. I'm going to get loosey goosey baby. Rito well. Lucas is the worry. Lucas is the worry. The uh, wild card, but not, but not, but not too short. He ensures us he's a great drifter now. T break's gonna lose. So we got T break, Adam the Bull, Doobie Magoo. <laughs> Doobie Magoo. Can you guess why? Judging. He's a little bit overconfident. A little bit overconfident in the car, I think. There was also a suspicious smell of uh, clutch on the way past. Clutch. clutch, the smell of clutch is bad. We got four more laps to go. Oh, oh dirt drop. I'm not gonna be called clutch break. Behind the wheel Adam O'Connor, the bull. He's the bull O'Connor, like he's just He's bull through the corner, bull through the grass, bull through the clutch, the whole lot. Now, clutch is sticking to the floor. Oh no. Okay. It's a little low clutch, buddy. You got a clutch sticking to the floor. Every time you do it, you have to clutch, pull the fake, put, put it up. Come on. He's a. I think there's, there's, there's a new nickname coming here. Clutch break. Clutch well, I was going to judge this, but now I'm just going to go drive Jimmy Oaks' car, so see you guys. Oh, what the fuck? It's all, it's all all right he's for Dave. Now. He's judging. He's judging. You're judging now. Judging. You guys drive this yeah, car. Judging. Best. Even if the clutch hadn't gone, there is zero tire left. Because I went into that corner and I went. Leave some for the boys. That was three laps there. I went into that corner. I went to clutch in, and the head was like stuck to the floor. So. Sorry. Because there's no clutch. I don't think there's any tires, but let's see how far we get. <laughs> Josh, you coming with? No. Hey, can you take this? That was pretty good. It worked. That's, I, I think Adam was having a bit of a big omanko. Is there a clutch problem? The clutch is f***ed, I just didn't use it. <laughs> Driving around the issue. You know what, I've, yeah. I, I, I've just stayed out of this. This is a tea break, broke nothing. <laughs> Apart from a Lambo the other day, I did break a Lambo. Just a Lambo. <laughs> Drift games. So Stevie's been recording on this all weekend and I'm hoping now that he's gonna give me some footage for the previous video, so if you saw that and then all the footage will have been from Stevie and that which is Total. Sick. I'm gonna dump all the footage to you. Whatever you wanna use, you can use. I'm gonna use it for a vlog too. But anything that you wanna use, if it makes sense, why not put it in there, it'd be fun. Absolutely, absolutely. Alright, so um, basically what, what happened was You uh, drove the car and now it won't start. No no no. I drove the car. I I drove the car, <laughs> then there a boy hit some tires in the back and he was like, it's my turn. So I was like, bro, just don't use the clutch, you'll be good. 
Has there ever been a video the where clutch. a just case employee has Cooked not it. broken Cooked the car it. that we've been given? <laughs> has that ever happened? Nah. thing? I don't want it to be our thing. It's not like I chose. <laughs> oh, it's funny because we break all the cars. It's not. I didn't break. Lucas. How did this turn on me now? Josh is just looking for anyone to take the blame. Or the brakes. I'm okay. editing this motherfucker. Listen, I've only broken a Lambo this trip. That's all. I only broke a Lamborghini Gallardo this trip, so it was actually a small, <laughs> small issue. But he kind of got away with it. He did get away with it. Yeah. Because they thought it was someone else. Because again, somebody else drove somebody afterwards. Somebody else drove it after him and they went straight off the track and went, oh, they're a very bad driver. I'm in the clear. <laughs> Josh is like, ha! Ha ha! Yeah. We are in Canada still. We are here at FDF Race Shop. I have a Tim Hortons coffee. I couldn't be more Canadian. Hey, you're hey. Hey. Oh. hey, 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 got him. And we're gonna get the tour, and I'm gonna get to see the car that I've been watching being built for probably a year now, maybe more than a year. The, the one-up Corvette game that's been going on internationally. I think the winner may be in here. Speaking of Corvette, Please. Corvette handbrake handle. Look at that. We need to get that for our place. There's gonna be a lot going through here that I think we're gonna say we're gonna have to get. Somehow you're gonna have to get a very cheap crap CNC machine and learn how to CNC. Would you like that? Let's get the angle grinder and a die tool and we'll yep. be there for fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why we're not doing it. <laughs> okay, so this is the main entrance area. These are all things we will be putting into our pockets as we go through the tour. <laughs> How big are your You're pockets? Pull big pockets today. Ah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> We just have our quick 3D printer. Ooh. Ooh. So like, we just got this recently, so now we've been 3D printing, bolting it to knuckles, checking it before we go through and see and see it. That's so you can put things on the car like that? Yeah, you can't test them, but you can test well, fit it to make now. sure everything's like that, because if you Go run this on this CNC. Yeah, Very expensive, but it just gets us a better idea to see if there's any little clearance things we missed on the scan or anything like that. And then, sure. yeah, we can go straight into the back shop where all the actual magic happens to get the parts looking like this. It's like cribs, that's where the magic happens. It's like magic happens. <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is everything here literally is built in house. So it starts off as round bar for our CNCs, for the spacers, tie rod bodies, everything like that. Sheet of metal, you can get a good idea over here on our water jet. Oh, this is a water, not laser. Yeah, this is all water jet. So this three quarter. And water goes through this? Water. And sand. Wow. I see oh, something okay. fancy going through this here. This is the party is. <laughs> so this is the CNC area. So right now they're making one of those handbrake handles we were just looking at in the front floor. Yeah, so that's what it looks that's like when it comes out. Wow. That's so what he's making right now. That kids is how handbrakes are made. We also got these for you guys. Dylan went out of his way to make some FDF keychains that have LZ World Tour on them for everybody. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got a bunch of those for you guys to take with you. This is where all the water jet parts come. Like everything that's on that sheet comes back here, goes over to the sandblaster. Each knuckle has tabs on them and everything, so you can line up so every little place. part. Then he has some spacers machine, so he just bolts it together and can weld it all together without having a million jigs for a million different knuckles. Every bung we use for the hind joint in the arms are also all done in house on the CNCs over there. CNCs always go. <laughs> we need I, I another actually, one. To be honest, I didn't know that you guys made every single piece. That it helps us with quality control of everything. You put your bar in there and it feeds it into the machine so you don't have just loose bar or anything like that. It just, you can put stack a bunch of bar in there and when that bar's out, it'll put another one down so it just runs itself. This machine is made by the same company, the Formula, Formula 1 team. Wow. So hopefully this machine's better than their program. But yeah, then when we come down over here, you're in the Yeah, literally raw material off the water jet. Like this arm was out of that plate. Yep. Then you sandblast it. Goes to welders. They take the bongs, everything like that. Weld in like that. Even has a tab on where it needs to be in the arm and everything. And then we sandblast it again, and then it goes right to the hammer platinum. That is so cool that you can see the I like that. straight through. Literally through the whole chain of how it's made. And yeah. that is how it's made. And then over here is the sandbox that we use. It goes over here and we even got it 
bug off and everything. This is the maker, so you, you got the spray gun, everything, it all does, it goes right in here. And then when you're done, you have the racks that are the same over there. You hang them up, and then it goes right into the oven. So I decided I built these racks to hold hundreds of parts. It's crazy. Probably made this device in house as well, didn't you? Yep, <laughs> just I made it up. I feel like every time Josiah gets to a problem, he goes, I will solve that problem. I'll just make that. He doesn't need to call anybody, just make no. it here. That's well, Matt Field at FD, we were looking for a back window for the Corvette. Matt's like, oh, you can order from here. Just I was like, I'm just going to make it. Okay, man. How many guys are working here full time? Uh, we have 16 employees now, right now. When I started, what was it, two and a half years ago, we had four of us. So we've definitely grown a lot since then. We got to expand the race department too at some point. But yeah, we'll take a little uh, stop in here. This is the media room, lunch room, sim room, whatever you want to call it. So. They're down there playing sim. <laughs> oh, they, 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 you're Lucas from <laughs> telling you anyways. <laughs> the B-roll went very flat there for a moment, I think. But yeah, this is Jack's home. Where all the nice magic space. happens for the video. Nice space. Yeah, that's it. Oh, is that from today? Yeah. Oh, that's it. It's much tidier than my desk. This is a bad... It's not... I, I, I always say that I have a lot of stuff, so it can't be tidy. Yeah, you went in there and took everything you have in the whole warehouse and dumped it on that desk. That'd be Josh's. No, <laughs> oh, that would be half of Josh's. Six shop loads of crap. You're getting hard done by here. Yeah. Ah, come on. No, you're not. It's accurate. It's accurate. Hey, if I, it's three against one right now, and I haven't even seen the desk yet. Are you, you on their side already? <laughs> no, even if you tried, you couldn't because it's covered in shit. That's the problem. You bring it. Let's move away from the desk. So this is a custom color kit. S chassis, 350Z bearing. But yeah, so then once it's all done at powder, it comes back here just like anything here. That's chassis lowers, nothing in them as you saw in the rack over there. But then you have all your heim joints, all your taps, Ackerman plates, bearings, every nut and bolt you can think of for the kits, all your spacers. Look at all the stuff. <laughs> this makes us look really unorganized, Dave. If it doesn't go right to a bin for a order, it comes here. This is all your BMW E36, E46, E80, E90, uh, WRX Subarus, oddly enough. Yeah, <laughs> saw one of those this uh, weekend. Yeah, and then you got your Mustang stuff, RX-7, Genesis, like JZX, IS300, and then you got Supra, FRS, and then yeah, on the other side is your favorite Corvette stuff. Ah, uh, here we are. Yeah, which we need to expand this and we keep expanding this because this guy keeps making more Corvette stuff. So yeah, you got Corvette knuckles, mini kits, mild kits, uh, just OEM upper replacements, like anything you can get for Corvette, we probably have it. Your other Dave books? probably wants it. Oh, all of it. <laughs> What's in the bag? <laughs> What's in the bag? Stick your head over there. Snack. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Don't eat them. They're not the edible ones. What? Right, Mike? <laughs> Sounds like a rough time. Yeah. So like that's pretty much the shop entails of just quick, easy. What goes on here? Easy. And easy. <laughs> I mean, you know how it goes. We just, just press the buttons, things happen, put them on the shelf, put them in the box. It seems very simple. And I like that, because not much comp not much geometry no. to it, not much CNC to it. Like, a CNC machine is just you press the no, button. No, I mean, just... without getting into too much detail of like how it all works. It's just, yeah. that's... Because then we would have the, all the symbols. It's sweet. Like, just keep it you... seeping. Because Josiah, when he explains it, he loses me. Okay, so he, I just he, took you on a tour when he started on the CNC, and he's only in powder coating. So think about that. You've seen the we, shops. We were, so on, far. we were on the better tour. By the end of it with Josiah, your your trigonometry levels have gone through the It'll roof. Be we always said we would come here for one reason, because our journey started with FDF. If you guys don't know, was that I wanted to get an angle kit for my Corvette. Yep. Nobody had one, and I just Googled, and then this little Canadian shop popped up that had an angle kit. Got talking to Josiah. And I got the first kit, which is a kit still on the car. Yeah. Like to this day. It's time to upgrade that boy. Three years now, four years now. Yeah, three over two No years. issues, but you guys have upgraded some stuff. And Josiah, in the meantime, has built everything from scratch for a Corvette. So we're going to go check out the car that I've been wanting to see in the flesh. Because I don't know much about cars, but I know a lot about Corvette C6s. And this one is wild. Yeah, it's showing off. You know what? It is a little bit of a flex at the track, but I think of it as like it's much safer, it's much faster, it's more efficient. You don't need a jack. It's 
flex. Way to justify it to yourself, that's what it is. I like that he's justified it with all these other reasons, but really just looks so cool when the car is jacked up and you can actually see everything. And then One of the most exciting things was showing up to the LZ World Tour, getting out my compressor, hooking it up and being like, I'm gonna walk away now and the car just oh. goes up on its own. And I'll come back when it's up and I can do a bull check, I can change my tires, I can do whatever, I can change the alignment, I can mess around with my Ackerman, I can check my uh, bump steer, all, this, all, of, all your this. favorite things. I have none of this. So basically, I'm gonna tell you the story. We built our Corvette, and at the time, that was like the bee's knees, because it was everything that everyone had learned about Corvettes. Mm -hmm. Then we get to last year, and everyone that everyone had learned about Corvettes, like, oh, you didn't look at it all, and you just decided to start again from scratch and build a car that essentially is just out of your brain with very little input from anyone else to make drifting, I don't know, push it along, I guess. Yeah. New tech. So after you guys just did a shop tour, you can understand that anything that I can think of, we can make. Yeah. So with that power in your hands, this is what we created. And I wanted to pick a chassis where the base of the chassis was as good mechanically as you could possibly get. Yeah. So I can build off of that and run with it. I can literally do whatever I want. So the Corvette has issues. We can go over what they were and how I fixed them. So let's let's go high level with the car. Before we get into the, the bits and pieces that are so unique to this car. Powertrain wise. All I'm gonna do is compare this to my so I have a V8. Yeah. This one is a much better V8. Much more powerful V8. Yeah, it's got a lot of jam. So the, well it makes 655 wheel horsepower on a rolling big roller dyno. Yeah. What do those numbers mean? Not a whole lot. They just are a very tunable, road repeatable type of dyno. So it simulates road driving the best. The numbers that you get out of it, great. Who cares? Some people do. On nitrous, it made about 800 wheel on that same rolling dyno. NA. This is NA, yeah. So you're talking to us, it would be a nearly 900 flywheel horsepower with nitrous. Yes, yeah. NA, which is bad. That is pretty bad. A lot of sucking is going on through this that, filter. Yeah, yeah so large, we will put it back on because it looks better. You can see that the middle of the engine is actually, this pan is offset or else this pan would be in my windshield. I was just about to say, yeah, that was an issue we had with how close the filter was getting to actually. So I 3D scanned this. I made a cool video about it, how it fits on the intake manifold and seals there. But basically I had to offset it so that it still fits and the hood is still very easy to cut. Just a slot, fits perfectly. And it's quite sleek with the hood down. You did it more for function, but it actually turned out to be quite nice to look at as well. Yeah, it is. Does it obstruct your view? Of course. I was about to say, my, mine does too, and mine is not as big as that. Chicane? Yeah. I have to memorize it as I'm rolling towards it because I can't see any of it. Before I leave the line, I'm kind of doing one of these. And then as soon as I leave, I do one of these. And I probably change You're it. taller than me, and I struggle to fit in my Corvette. So sit in this car. You're gonna like it. So I love this because I've never, this is quite similar in some ways to my car. Number one, the cage is much lower, which makes it easier to get in and out of. Mine is not that easy to get in and out of. But it's one of the few cars that I can get in and very quickly. Oh, you have way more room than I do. The seat is on the floor. This is a lot more room. And this is new for your viewers. I'm extremely upset about it. I don't want to talk about oh, it. Oh, that's the awkward bit to get off as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm aware. The thing that I like about it is you can put your legs completely straight, hook your feet under the pedals, and relax your knees. I fit so much better in this car than my own it's car. nice, isn't it? It's really nice. So, you are running a full link engine management system throughout the whole car, which is similar to my car. Yes. Except you've got a fancy new PDM as well. Three of them. Three of them from Link ECU. These yeah. are the things that Link, we're getting them and I'm so happy because all those messy fuses and stuff like that, this is gonna replace it's, all of those. It's, it's crazy when you have um, the rush current from like your fans, your fuel pumps is always super high. So yep. maybe it wears out a fuse or blows a brake or whatever you have uh, set up in your race car. The PDM you can set up to retry. We have our setting up to retry six times with a delay of over rush current of like two seconds and all of these parameters you can set up so that the fans may overload the circuit but it'll allow it to overload for one second and then it'll retry it six times if it sees an overload so it has all of these redundancies to ensure that the everything's going to work so in the rear we have the hdk from drift hq hatch rear quarters this is from sultan these are super I'm nice so tired from uh, store 17. you can see yeah. his logo 
there. Hey. So the two link PDMs are located here and here. These are controlling everything that you see in the rear and some things within the car. So we have three fuel pumps running. We have nitrous, bottle warmers, controllers, sensors. We have um, the cool suit and we have the ethanol content sensor. We have a lot of things going on back here. We also have potentiometers on the suspension and we have tire temperature sensors as well as track temperature sensors on this car. Wow. There is a lot more stuff going on back here than yours. Mine is a diff. <laughs> and a fuel tank. And this fuel is tank. the potentiometer. So this measures the travel of the suspension while you're driving to see if your dampening is set up correctly. If you have too much bounce, how much is it compressing? Is it hitting the bump stops? If it is, let's adjust the dampening. Let's increase the spring rate. Let's do something to correct that. You just see Adam's face. Now I was at FD last weekend. The most important sensor that I saw a lot of the guys that are winning use tire temperature sensor. Per 10 degrees of track temperature change, you want to adjust your tire pressure by one or two PSI. Per 10 degrees, because if you qualify four hours after you practice, the track is 40 degrees different, you're gonna to want to change your pressure, or else you're gonna fly off the track or be way too gripped up. So you can almost predict it. It brings you within a closer margin. So if you never touch your tire pressure and you go out on a track that's 90 degrees when it was 130, this is Fahrenheit, by the way. We need to yeah. up Sorry, our game of think. Yeah. All right, so this is what I really wanted to see because as much as the tech and the sensors and all that stuff is incredible, what affect me owning a Corvette is you redesigning what a Corvette is, essentially, because the front of a Corvette is an unusual setup, and for drifting, it's not ideal. It's good. It's not fantastic like an S13, 14, E46, whatever. 100%. Even when people say they're the S chassis of America, I go, no, they don't feel like an S chassis does. But you have figured out somehow how to make it feel like an S chassis or a BMW. Yeah, so a lot of people know my S14. Uh, this car behaves, sounds, and drives similar to my S14. How could you possibly do that with a double wishbone? Well, I made a knuckle that holds all of the suspension points in a way that will make it feel like an S chassis. So you could hop in this, and then hop in my S14, and you would say, wow, these are pretty similar, but this one is quite a bit faster. Corvettes lack many things. The steering rack is in a horrible location. They yeah. have no travel range. They're great road course cars. They have very short springs, but stiff springs, big sway bars, they can corner like crazy. You throw tires at a Corvette, it beats almost every car racing. Um, the problem with drifting is we require quite a bit of droop. We require a good contact patch all over the place and all of these things, all for the sake of competitive drifting. Yeah. Obviously, if you want to just drift for fun, Corvette, don't do anything to it, it's fine. But for me, I had to fix all of these problems to make this the best chassis for me, so it drives good, it's fast, and the most important thing to me is making a chassis drivable. If you have a yep. fast car but you can't drive it, that's no good to anybody. Yep. So what I did here was increase the motion ratio, meaning that I also increased the travel range for how short of a spring you can fit on the car. So this car actually has around seven inches of travel, or 175 millimeters. Inches is fine, we Itch. still have inches. You still go by inches. Yeah. In what? And never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Control arms are made in a way that allows for the maximum amount of wheel clearance. And then my uh, suspension pickup points are also made in a way where I can modularly change them if I was ever in a crash. Okay. So we actually did bump quite a few doors and I have not tested this. Everything worked really well. Um, all of these pieces of material are really high strength. Closer. But this is some fitment for the that's for pretty close kit. it's unfortunate but that's where it had to be for bump steer it just but it, i know you works. love bump steer because you talk about it all the time i do <laughs> changing my acumen on this car is really really cool um if you can see it here i have some shims stacked up right there so you can actually see three shims here so what happens is there's a bolt on the side and then there's two here if you loosen those bolts and open it, you slide a shim in and then you retighten it, you have effectively changed your Ackerman within seconds. Wow. Um, the knuckles front face has capture slots. So all of the nuts to these bolts don't spin. You don't need a wrench on the back. They're captured within the knuckle. So you can just take an impact, zap this off, zap this off, and the nuts don't spin. The reason I use nuts is because I hate aluminum threads. 
Aluminum threads suck, especially if you're taking bolts in and yeah. out often. So we've done this in a way that competitively, this is going to be the best. You cannot beat this. The bump stop, you can see, is well used. This block, also, you unbolt this, you slide a shim in, you rebolt it, that will change where it stops. So you have a nice, firm limit on the, on the wheel's angle, and you can see that we have 10 millimeters of clearance to the upper control arm. It's all very, very tight. Yes. But, but it worked, oh wow. So it will not go further than that. This is right around 66 degrees of, of angle. Wow, it's a lot for a Corvette. It's the most any Corvette could ever have, ever. Yep. And the only reason I can say that with confidence is because I have put the steering rack where it is, and the original steering rack location will not allow you to do this. To our viewers, this is not a Corvette steering rack anymore. This is where it gets interesting. So you've completely moved the steering point on the Corvette. Yeah, if I can point out on the camera easily where the original steering rack was, it was approximately here. This is where the original steering rack used to come out and mine is moved all the way to here. So this is a BMW E46 steering rack. Designing this car, I had 3D scan the car, put it into my computer, and then I tried to move the Corvette rack in all kinds of different places. Basically what I mean by that is you can grab the scan of the rack, grab the scan of the car, and I can physically move this rack and try to throw it in places. And the rear also, from this angle, is just nuts. So do you remember, you can pull it up, the shear point that I was talking about yeah. on the car where the wheel was like this and then you're like, how is he going to fix that? And then two minutes later, the wheel's back yeah, to normal. Yeah, you actually changed your suspension so quicker than the bolts, tire. Yeah, these three bolts on this plate are shear bolts. So when uh, I was hit in the rear, these three bolts broke, all three. We had three new ones and we just zapped them back in. The alignment was unchanged and I drove back out on the track within two minutes. That's almost like a crumple. This is a design failure point. Exactly. Yeah, it's not snapping things. Exactly. These are on car adjustable, but this isn't even the coolest thing about the rear of this car. We made an adjustment at the track that was so cool, I didn't even try it yet. And when I did it, I was like, I'm blowing myself away right now. <laughs> See these plates at the top here? So these plates have three positions of camber adjustment. You take the plate out and you flip it and you put it back in and it moves the wheel one degree out, zero and one degree in. So without touching any threads, you can just flip that plate and it'll adjust your camber. So when I was at the track, I had a little too much wear on the outside, meaning I had too much positive camber. So I said, I'm gonna try, this is the perfect opportunity. So without changing anything else on the alignment, I swapped two plates I went back out and the tire wear was perfect from this one adjustment. And I hadn't tested it yet, I just designed it so that I could theoretically try it, which is a lot of the things on this car. This is a simpler idea, but it's a practical idea. So the simplest ideas are the hardest to come up with, always. All right, Josiah, thank you for showing us around uh, what is essentially 78,000 years ahead of my format right already in the prototype stage. We can't wait to see you on track more at work this weekend at the LZ World Tour. I'm sure it's gonna work even better when you go to no, so many more tracks, different faster tracks. And if you guys wanna catch up on the entire build, not only the build, but how this man came up with all of this, you can watch, there's like 37 episodes? 37, yeah. On the FDF Race Shop YouTube channel. I'm a little addicted to it because obviously, I love people figuring out problems. Josiah, thanks for the full tour. We had an awesome day. They also loaned us to 350Z today to do some drifting. This is our last episode from Canada. We had an amazing time here. And now we're heading back to Ireland because we've got two back-to-back -back comp events for me and Josh in the next two weeks. So we're gonna get some sleep, get some rest, get back to Ireland, get ready for some drift.